It's the mid-1980s in Sydney, and a war is being fought on the streets between rival factions over the control of the city's criminal underworld and its illegal resources. Hardened men, who aren't afraid to get their hands dirty, become valuable assets to the gangs and played an instrumental role in their drive for gangland supremacy. It was a need for these acts of discreet disposal that turned a nightclub bouncer into a contract killer. Christopher Dale Flannery, aka Mr. Rentakill, became a prolific character in Sydney's gangland wars of the 1980s. It was his ability to deliver upon his contract without a second thought that made him a hitman in high demand. However, by the mid-1980s, Mr. Rentakill would become a victim of his own success, and after leaving in a taxi to meet his boss, he seemingly disappeared without a trace. In the annals of Australia's criminal underworld, one name seems to pop up time and time again, Christopher Dale Flannery. Alleged to be a hitman with over 15 kills, his price for a contract was believed to be $50,000 and bragged that, quote, anyone could be eliminated, end quote. Described as a ruthless killer with psychopathic tendencies by his contemporaries, he was also a devoted family man who could seemingly turn off his killer instinct like a light switch. It was his tendencies like these that allowed him to found a network of contract killers known as Rent-A-Kill Inc. and place himself as the main operator. So successful was he that corrupt police even sought out his special services. Growing up in the hard working class Melbourne suburb of Brunswick, under the strict and abusive authority of his father perhaps helped Flannery develop his violent behaviour in later years. Born in 1948 into an abusive home, his father left the family when Flannery was just nine and he never saw his father again. It was in 1962 when Chris Flannery was 14 years old that he committed his first crime and was subsequently sent to a boys reformatory in Melbourne. This would set young Flannery on a life path of violent crime and by the age of 17 he was again convicted of theft, housebreaking and assault and was sent to Melbourne's Pentridge Prison where he served time in the notorious H Division with a well-known Melbourne underworld figure, Mark Chopper Reed. The conditions were appalling, and it wasn't long before fiery-tempered Flannery revolted against his authorities by staging a hunger strike. This caught the attention of the media and the government, who launched an inquiry into the alleged horrible conditions of the prisoners at Pentridge. Serving five years of his nine-year sentence, Flannery was released in 1970, Shortly after release, he began courting a woman he had known years prior to incarceration, Kathleen. It was around this time that Flannery began working as nightclub security for Mickey's Discotheque, a popular nightclub frequented by many of Melbourne's criminal underworld. It was not long, however, before Chris Flannery found his way into a life of crime. Many accounts depict Flannery as an incompetent criminal, and the story goes that he was charged with armed robbery in 1974 and while on bail, he absconded and fled to Perth, Western Australia. While in Perth, Flannery had gainful employment at a menswear store. However, he had to leave his job as the law caught up with him, and during a bungled armed robbery at the store he worked at, he was apprehended in Sydney by the king of crooked cops, Detective Roger Rogerson. Allegedly, Flannery paid a bribe to Rogerson to escape conviction. However, after a previous charge of sexual assault in Victoria, Flannery was sent to prison again for a further three years. It was in prison that he confessed to his friend Alan Williams that he was no good at crime, and he had a brilliant idea to cash in on his violent behaviour. Christopher Dale Flannery decided he was going to kill people for money. It was then that Mr. Rentakill was born. Recently released from prison, Flannery became Mr. Rentakill and his first contract was Victorian barrister Roger Wilson. Roger Wilson owed money to business partner Mark Alfred Clarkson, but had to declare bankruptcy before he could make any repayments. Wilson went missing on Friday, February the 1st, 1980. Mr Wilson was last seen here at the factory premises at the corner of Currajong Street and Robs Road in Footscray on Friday night. Driving his Porsche on what was then known as the Southeastern Freeway near inner-city Richmond, 
when he was allegedly pulled over by two detectives in an unmarked car. This was, however, a clever ploy orchestrated by the members of rent kill Inc., Chris Flannery and Kevin Weary Williams. According to police files, the two fake detectives handcuffed Roger Wilson, threw him in the back of the unmarked car, and drove to the rural area of Gippsland, east of Melbourne, where Wilson was murdered. The Porsche was moved to Tullamarine Airport, where it was found by Victorian police, and the body was removed and buried in an unknown location. Eventually, Clarkson, Flannery and Williams were charged with the murder of Roger Wilson, and media outlets chased the story of Flannery, a flashy dressed hitman for hire. Flannery flaunted his ego and charisma on current affairs television programs. And what's, what's your answer to that? It's just ridiculous. That it's totally untrue. The men were acquitted of the murder due to lack of a body, and the star witness, Deborah Boundy, going conveniently missing. Within minutes, just as Flannery walked free from court, he was arrested and extradited to Sydney for the murder of brothel owner Raymond Loxley. Other alleged victims of Flannery were Terry Basham and his de facto partner, Susan Smith. In 1982, a jury failed to reach a verdict on the Loxley murder case and a retrial was adjourned until 18th of April 1984. Flannery was subsequently acquitted. Flannery's trial had been rescheduled for the 31st of January 1984. After his acquittal, Flannery bought a house in Torella, Sydney and brought his wife Kathleen and children up from Melbourne. Mr. Rentekill then went to work as a bodyguard for big-time Sydney crime figure George Freeman. At the time, Freeman and other members of Sydney's criminal underworld were engaged in a violent war over the city's drug trade, and Mr. Rentekill was right in the middle of it. The genesis of the Sydney gangland war was the growing drug trade in New South Wales during the 1970s, and it all kicked off with an operation from New Zealand, the Mr Asia Syndicate. The Mr Asia Syndicate began operating in New South Wales, Australia in the 1970s with the aid of the Australian branch of the Calabrian Mafia, more specifically one of its members, Robert Trimboli. In a nutshell, after the fall of the Mr. Asia Syndicate, a power vacuum developed and many factions of Sydney's underworld began warring with each other for control of the trade. The main gangs were the Freeman McPherson Group, led by Lenny McPherson and George Freeman, and the Smith Henry Group, led by Nettie Smith and his associate and bodyguard, Graham Abbo Henry, who also associated with crooked cop Detective Roger Rogerson. Initially under the umbrella of George Freeman, Flannery eventually began associating with Nettie Smith with the McCann Dominican Group, led by Barry McCann and his associate, a standover man, Thomas Tough Tommy Dominican. This feud led to a tit for tat spate of killings, and police had tried to negotiate with Flannery to stop the killings. However, by this time, Flannery had fully embraced his Mr. Rent-A-Kill persona and was reported to have become increasingly unhinged. On the 6th of June 1984, Flannery is alleged to have been the gunman in the attempted murder of Sydney Drug Squad detective Michael Jury. Jury had been the undercover agent involved in a police drug operation which resulted in charges being laid against Flannery's friend, Alan Williams. Williams later testified that Flannery had attempted to bribe Jury through Rogerson in order to get the charges against Williams dismissed. When Jury rejected repeated attempts at bribery, Williams claims he agreed to pay Flannery and Rogerson $50,000 each to murder Jury. On what he thought was his deathbed, later Jury told detectives he believed he was shot because of the Melbourne job. Later bragging to his mates that, quote, anyone could be eliminated, it seems no one was off limits, and if the price was right, he would provide the hit. Flying too close to the sun and fueled by booze and drugs, Mr. Rentekill's behaviour was now causing concern for his gangland contemporaries. They all wanted him gone. Flannery's feud with Tommy Demeekin and company had erupted into a series of killings between the two parties, but it was on the 27th of January 1985 that Flannery would be attacked at his family home that would change everything. Around lunchtime on the 27th of January 1985, Flannery and his wife and children had just arrived home when their house was showered with bullets from unknown persons. While no one was seriously injured, Flannery did receive a wound on his hand while he was trying to protect his wife. No one was ever charged with the shooting, but Flannery blamed Demeekin for the attempted hit. 
If Flannery was already volatile, this event sparked his paranoia and his behavior became even worse. It was alleged that George Freeman wanted to end the fighting between Flannery and the McCann Dominican gang, but Flannery wasn't about to bury the hatchet. After the house shooting, Flannery had been hiding out and moving houses, frequently leaving his wife and children at home. In a bizarre attempt to win back favor with his former boss, George Freeman, Chris Flannery shoots his friend, Tony Spaghetti Eustace. His body was found next to his gold Mercedes and bleeding profusely. Barely hanging on to life, Eustace later died at the hospital and word got out that Flannery was behind the hit. Worried that their gun for hire was on a psychotic killing spree, it's thought that the gangs decided to put a hit out on the erratic hitman. On the 9th of May 1985, Flannery had been living in Sydney's inner city in an apartment close to the CIB headquarters. On this day, Flannery received a call from George Freeman requesting that the two should have a meeting. Unable to start his car, Chris Flannery contacted Freeman again and was then told to catch a taxi. He does this and as the taxi enters Liverpool Street, Christopher Dale Flannery is never seen again. Several theories surround his disappearance, ranging from being tortured and killed by George Freeman to Nettie Smith's confession of Detective Roger Rogerson shooting Flannery and even living elsewhere under a different name. To this date, no one has ever been charged with his likely homicide. The disappearance of Mr. Rendergill remains one of Australia's greatest gangland mysteries. But what are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and click subscribe if you want to see more content like this and hit that notifications bell to keep up to date with the latest videos. And together, we can explore the strange, the terrifying, the unknown, the shadow matter.